Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Julie Roy's why she hates John MacArthur. So who is Julie Roy's? Julie Roy's is a Christian reporter who routinely goes after men in prominent ministry positions. Uh, a lot of these men are bad guys because a lot of men in prominent ministry positions are bad guys. If you look at the current state of the American church, uh, there are no shortage of bad guys in high positions. So, but here's the thing. Here's what Evangelical Dark Web does differently from Julie Roy's. When we do reporting, we generally don't go after the lowest hanging fruit. Uh, we're not doing videos every or articles every day on Stephen Furtick or uh, even Michael Todd. And I wrote the book on Michael Todd exposing him early on. So, you know, I don't go after him every week or anything like that. But uh, here's the thing that separates Evangelical Dark Web from Julie Roy's, and that is we actually love the church. We do this out of a love for the church. Julie Roy's attacks the church in order to hate on the church. That is the difference because Julie Roy's is not a Christian. She is not a believer. I do not affirm her faith whatsoever. And we'll talk about why I do not affirm her faith shortly after we revisit who John MacArthur is. John MacArthur is a longtime pastor of Grace Community Church. Uh, he's definitely one of the last of the old conservative uh, resurgence fight, even though he's not a Southern Baptist, but he was a part of the movement to really uh, fundamentally secure Christianity from theological liberalism over a generation ago. So he's part of that old guard, and you know he's up there in age, obviously. And... You know, there's a lot of people that they've wanted to take out, specifically people like Paige Patterson or, uh, you know, they, they wanted to take those people out. And John MacArthur is definitely one of the last people of that movement that they've not really taken out yet. So uh, John MacArthur definitely has a target on his back by theological liberals like Julie Roy's, which we will get into in a second here. And uh for that reason, people want to go after him. So Julie Royce is one of the people that routinely has a grudge against uh, John MacArthur. If you know, we go back through the archives of her site, I really think this begins because of the whole John MacArthur's go home comments regarding Beth Moore, because Julie Royce is absolutely a feminist. She's absolutely a feminist. That's why, you know, her, mo uh, that's why you'll see her, pr uh, promote women like Lorianne Thompson who had an affair with Robbie Zacharias and wants to claim that she's a sex abuse victim when she's absolutely not. So Julie Royce is so feminist that she views women generally views women that have consensual affairs as abuse victims, which is a completely unbiblical standpoint, by the way. So let's just look into some of Julie Royce's past reporting, specifically as it regards to John MacArthur and We'll look at how this should be viewed in current uh, uh, retrospect. Um, so this is the big article from last year that she did reporting on John MacArthur, and it was very lazy reporting. Uh, it was so lazy that it's basically like he lives in a house that's worth this much money, and you know it's a house that he bought decades ago and is in California, which is a pretty expensive place to live. So... A million dollar home in California is, in many cases, nothing. Uh, I believe there's also a comment about how he lives like 11 miles from... Yes, yeah, th this is a 2.3, 2.5, sorry, bathroom home located next to a world-class world class private club with a championship golf course, tennis courts, pools, and fine dining. The home is just 11 miles from the beach. 11 miles from the beach. In, in that specific area in California, that's nothing. Him, along with like 11 million other people, live 11 mil miles from the beach or less. So that th it, that's how shoddy this reporting is. Uh, and again, she does not hold the same standard. Like, she's very friendly in her reporting towards people like Beth Moore, who is arguably richer than John MacArthur. So this was a very lazy article that tried to presuppose that he was a prosperity gospel preacher or lived a pro that him living a prosperous lifestyle somehow indicated hypocrisy. But 
even if it does, this article does not make the case substantially. It is a shoddily written article because Julie Royce is not a good writer. Um, this is another attempt. So the other reason, so there are two primary reasons why Julie Royce hates John MacArthur. The first reason is that she is a feminist. And I believe I've covered that in part. Uh, that is the number one reason why she hates John MacArthur. Cause Julie Royce is not like, you know, I'm more theologically motivated in my reporting where, you know, I'm going after people that have a theology that's liberal Whereas Julie Royce is theologically liberal and she hangs out with and has writers that are theologically liberal. And I, I think I'll point that out in a second as well. So that's a major thing. She's theologically liberal. She's a hardcore egalitarian. She takes money from a very liberal university. As you can see, uh, the Royce report is very theologically liberal. If I can pull it up. She's got to have a donation link somewhere right here. And as you can see, it's through Judson University, which is, a again, a very liberal university. Uh, and Protestia not only pointed that out, which I already knew that she takes money from a university or she works through a university. But what um, they pointed out over at Protestia was that this is like, like a shell it, uh, she's using this 501c3 to accept tax deductible donations for her not 501c3 because if you just gave money to Julie Roy's report uh, it would not be tax deductible so she's trying to uh, use their uh, launder money through a 501c3 but the catch is that this 501c3 Judson University controls the money behind Roy's report. So the money that they launder for Roy's report, they have control over, which means they conceivably also have complete editorial control over Roy's report. And they're a theologically liberal and, you know, liberal university as well. So the other area where she really, so not only is she a theological liberal, which is very apparent if you see her reporting, like look at this report on the Tom Askell story, which I did a story on this last week and you know they brand Vody Bakum and uh Tom Askell as anti-woke which is based uh that's a good description and I don't hate it but obviously the way they're using anti-woke is to uh denigrate them uh so you know they call Tom Buck a s social media agitator even though he's a pastor uh, again very diminishing and then we see Bart Barber being promoted here <laughs> in a tweet um, so, it, you know, again, they're trying to relegate this issue to all about Trump. Um, and at the end, it kind of credits the decline of the Southern Baptist Convention to the conservative resurgence, which, again, is is historically asinine. But, you know, Bob Smyenta or whatever is a national reporter for the Religion News Service, which is not a Christian publication whatsoever. That is a very liberal publication. So, again, this is who Julie Roy's has on staff or has writing for her over at Roy's Report. Uh, another thing that... So that's just an example of how she's just a liberal reporter on everything. Another thing is how she went after John MacArthur's church for supposedly failing to report a uh, COVID outbreak or whatever to health department. And guess what? If you get coronavirus, that's none of the government's business. And a church has no moral obligation to report anyone who has been infected to either the health department, the state or Caesar, or even the congregants. That's none of their business. If someone's sick, that's none of their business. If someone has to miss church duties because they are sick, you, you know, you can give an announcement like that and say, pray for this person, but it's not their job to report whether someone has coronavirus or not. It's not the church's job to do that. And moreover, I can easily make a moral argument about how a church's complicity with uh, health department guidelines was disobedience to God. And that is a case that John MacArthur made when he talked about why he needed to reopen because continuing to remain closed was disobedience to God 
as it was the months that he was closed. I just want to point that out. John MacArthur did disobey God in Scripture when he initially shut down. And not only that, but they were adamant about their interpretation of Romans 13, which was incorrect at the time. And now you see John MacArthur has completely changed tone on this because he realized the theological conclusions or the logical conclusion of his theology led him to opposing clear biblical commands in scripture. And that he did more to acknowledge and have more self-awareness on that than the majority of churches in the, in the United States. And it is highly unfortunate that John MacArthur did not have uh, a larger impact on the church for this issue. But you see a lot of churches did not come to his aid. He basically got hung out to dry by a lot of celebrity pastors because he made them look bad. He made them look bad. And Julie Royce is a complete Branch Covidian. This is another reason why I do not affirm her faith. She is a Branch Covidian. If you went along with the government narrative, I think that is legitimate reason to, you know, at, at a minimum, you lack discernment. But when you're in news reporting, if you step into the realm of news reporting and you peddle the government narrative, you are in sin, you are lying, and you need to repent of that. Obviously, she has not repented of doing so. Uh, she, you know, again, this is these are fairly recent articles on this subject. And she went after him, kind of accusing him of killing people. Uh, and then, again, uh, other there, the other reporting on... Uh, so there's two major things that she's gone after John MacArthur for. First is the wealth. The other is the COVID. So she went after John MacArthur very hard on both of those, especially the COVID, because, again, she's a branch Covidian. She supported lockdown. She supported the government's current thing. And um, it just goes to show that she has no real discernment. She has no sense of truth. She does not understand the times. She does not want to understand the times. So what I do want to close off by saying is the Dark Links article that I did about Julie Royce and how she slanders John MacArthur. Because I do want to give credit to the people that were really ahead of me on reporting on this issue. So, uh, again, she's had long-standing beef with John MacArthur. So, uh, David Morrill over at Protestia has done just yeoman's work on this story. And then John, Mac uh, John Harris has also done a massive deep dive that I think was also pretty helpful for this story as well. Uh, here we see a timeline of events, which is put in chronological order, which is generally not how Julie Royce reported this story. And she did not really report the story in chronological order and highly relies on the testimony of Eileen Gray. Uh, so there's a lot going on in the story and it's not really, and it's very complicated Obviously, the, there's a huge disparity between when the church knew information versus when they when a lot of these actions took place versus what they knew at the time versus what we know now. So there's a clear hindsight bias with this article. But uh, there's a timeline. And again, this is dark links, which where I like to use other reporting to tell a story or just highlight events that I was unable to cover because I'm behind or had to focus on other issues. That's why I do dark links types articles. And then the anatomy of a smear where uh, I think I kind of touched up on that issue where they talked about the house. So this is just a quote. Julie Royce twisted the timeline. She abused facts. She abused the people involved. Most seriously, she denied the true power and nature of God's sovereignty in redemption and reconciliation. Because again, she's not a Christian. She does not report from a Christian standpoint. And she does not believe in processes like church discipline, processes like elders being male. And uh, this is another thing that they point out, which again was pretty largely known, was that Julie Royce is funded by a progressive Baptist college steeped in wokeness. Uh, Judson, much like Royce herself, claims to be theologically conservative, yet the school platforms the kind of woke lady pastors that make Beth Moore sound like Phyllis Shalafly. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Conservative Judston advertises a parity level commitment to diversity, uh, equity, or diversity, social justice, and racial reconciliation on their website, which confesses their practice of sin and partialism through race-based hiring and scholarships, so-called diversity curriculum 
transformation and segregated student organizations, yet perhaps no evidence of Justin, Judson's gospel-denying wokeness is clearer than their recent race and justice speaking series. So again, uh, this is Judson University, not a Christian university because they have stuff like this and their actions. And this is not a surprise. There really are few Christian universities out there. Very few. You're better off sending kids to a secular school, but like aware that they're going to a secular school than the a false Christian school like Baylor. Uh, and then again, John MacArthur's. And I, I write, there's no reason to consider Julie Ro Roy's a credible Christian journalist. There's also great reason to doubt her love for the church and faith altogether. Protestia pointed out on that her website accepts donations through Judson, which legally entitles the college to control the money Julie Royce receives under the guise of charitable donations. And, you know, I'm going to come out with more on Julie Royce, and I specifically just want to, you know, hammer two things home today. Julie Royce is a Branch Covidian, number one. Julie Royce is a feminist, number two. And you can't trust either of those people. You cannot trust a Branch Covidian, you cannot trust a feminist, because the Feminism is like the biggest plague on our society in the United States society because it has led to all the other plagues, all the other plagues, homosexuality, transgenderism. You know, I don't really have time for the, you know, the turfs that are angry about trannies and stuff like that because they own, they contributed to the problem that they now face. So, but I digress. Julie Royce is a bad actress. She's a bad actress. You cannot trust a feminist. You cannot trust a Branch Covidian, especially one in media. So she lied for the last two years, and that's just unacceptable and highly unprofessional as well. Yeah, I'd be interested to see whether she took money from the government as well uh, because they be paying for shills. So anyway, that's all I got to say. I, again, other people have done way better job than I could on reporting and exposing the lies that Julie Roy is reporting did in this most recent case. I'll link the dark links in the description below because, again, that's the hub for the resources. And I, I can't, you know, I know my limitations. I couldn't do it better than it's already been done. So let's just give people credit. Tell the story, give people credit. So that's what I did. But what I can do is highlight who Julie Royce is, why she's a bad guy, and why, spe what specifically her agenda is, and that is a feminist agenda. So, anyway, that's really all I got for today. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, also subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.